So how are analog filters and digital equalization related in a digital communications system? And here we've got a standard digital communications system with the transmitter, the channel, and the receiver. And we're going to be representing the input data as pluses and minus ones, as delta functions, which are going to be being put into the transmit filter. And this has the pulse shape of the waveform that's being used to transmit the digital information. Uh, of course, this goes into the channel, which has an impulse response. Uh, noise in the receiver is, is, uh, is there in an additive way that you can't uh, get rid of from the electrons moving due to thermal noise. And then in your receiver, you design a receiver filter, which then is sampled. And of course, you design this filter here to collect the energy from the signal that relates to each of these different data symbols. And for more information on that, there's a video on the channel on the matched filter, uh, which I encourage you to look at. And you can find the details in the information below this video. Um, let's just take one more, one, one more bit just to really visualize this. If this was a mobile communication system, uh, then the transmitted signal would be at a carrier frequency transmitted by antennas and the impulse response of this uh, filter here would potentially be something like let's say if it was BPSK then this impulse response would be a cos waveform at the carrier frequency for a length of time capital T. So this would be and then zero after that. Okay and so when a positive impulse comes and, and is put into this filter, the impulse response would be this cos waveform. When a negative pulse comes in, then the output would be the inverse of this, which would be 180 degrees phase shifted. So this would be binary phase shift keying example. And I, I point this out and I draw this picture because I always like to think of the waveform here. It's an actual analog waveform. We're sending digital data, but we're doing it with analog waveforms, which are these, in this case, that I gave the example as a cos wave at a carrier frequency, which has got either one phase or another. But it's an analog signal going into an analog channel. And therefore, at the receiver, we need to have an analog filter to add up the energy before we sample it to try to decide on the digital data. So it's really important that we understand how these analog filters relate to the digital data, and in particular, uh, equalization. Okay, so let's look here at uh, what we've got. We've got a, a, an impulse uh, 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 impulse train coming into a pulse shaping filter, coming into a channel with a receive filter, and these are all linear. And so we can convolve all of these, or that is what happens is the signal convolves through all of these. And so we're going to represent the overall channel and uh, filters with this uh, overall impulse response X. So XT is the convolution of these three components. Uh, and uh, when it's sampled, uh, I just make the point over here, this is the notation, we're going to use the digital version XK after sampling is just the overall value at the particular time. This is continuous, but at the times taken at the times K times capital T, where capital T is the time for a symbol to be sent. So that's T and 2T over here. And this sampling here is happening. So YK equals Y at K times capital T to give us our sampled uh, signal here. So this is the notation. Okay, but these are, as I pointed out, these are all analog filters, but we're sending digital communications. So let's look at the relationship. Okay, so again, there's a video on the channel on the matched filter, as I mentioned, um, but let's take that example from here to start with. So if the channel equaled a delta function, which means that there's a, a flat spectrum and there's no, uh, no band limiting on the channel, then exactly the signal that comes in comes out. And then what we could choose here for our filter is if we want to maximize the signal to noise ratio, then we would choose the filter to be the complex conjugate and time reversed value of the pulse shaping filter. Uh, and this is the case if your pulse shape only lasts between zero and capital T, which is the example that I've drawn over here. 
Um, so this is the match filter result. It's called a matched filter because the receiver filter is matched to the transmit filter. Um, and I'll just make one point about this. This is in this case, but more generally, the pulse shaping uh, can be more than just over zero to capital T. And there's a video on pulse shaping filtering, filtering on the channel. Again, check out the information below. Uh, and then all you we're doing then is choosing a different value of T where we're going to sample instead of capital T if we had a pulse shape that lasted for more than just zero to T. And so actually the time offset, I'm just going to make quickly the point that the time offset here, you can choose a different time offset and it just simply shifts this filter along. Uh, and so in some ways it's up to us to decide on the time reference because there's also a delay in the channel which we're not really accounting for here but in practice there is a time delay in the channel and so there'll always be a, a requirement to do synchronization to get that timing right at the receiver. And so we could represent the uh, impulse, the, the um, match filter simply by S star of minus T. And so we're just going to do that and we'll use that uh, in, a, in a couple of steps time as well. So I just want to make the point they're, they're both the match filter. It's all we've done is to do a time translation. Uh, and that's common uh, in terms of uh, digital communications. Okay, so this is the case for a channel which does not affect the signal. What about a channel which does affect the signal? For a general channel, we could pick, this is one option we could do, is we could pick our receive filter to be, this is analog filter, to be an, another design of our choice uh, convolved with the matched filter. So if the channel does something to the signal, we could keep the matched filter in GT, and we could add another filter in before it, just concatenate filters here in our receiver, and we could choose that filter, design that receiver filter, to be the, essentially the inverse of the channel. So we could choose it so that CT convolved with DT, so the channel convolved with this filter we're designing, the, we could just try to design the DT such that the convolution of these gives us a delta function. And I think you can see then if we did that, then we would have the same uh, overall result as in this case here. So what are, what are some uh, issues with that? Uh, this would be a good way to overcome the impact of the channel, the smoothing of the channel, if it's going to be ba give band limitations to our signal and smoothing our signal out uh, and causing us problems. This would be exactly uh, the cure for that in the analog domain, if it were possible. Okay, so well, one thing with this is, let's look in the, this is in the time domain, we can take the Fourier transform and let's look in the frequency domain. So this would be in the frequency domain, the convolution becomes a multiplication. And so we would have these two equal one. So C times D equals one in the frequency domain. Uh, and so one thing we can see straight away is that if there are any frequency components in of the channel which null out the signal, so if, if C at any value of omega, if C equals zero, then that's a complete null of the signal from the channel and that, that frequency component is not being allowed to get passed through the channel, then this would be zero and then D, to make this equals one, D would have to be infinity. And so this is going to be a problem of course. And so we can't realize that filter in our receiver. And so, and, and if we, even if C was very, very small, not quite zero, then D would be very, very big at that frequency. Now, what would that mean is one where you have to build that filter and it might be very difficult to build that filter in analog. But the second thing is the noise is coming in through that filter. So the noise is coming in through G, which means it's coming through D, if you've designed it like this. And so the noise would be going through that big gain so if C is small at a, at a value of omega, D would be very big. The noise at that, the frequency component of the, the component of the noise at that frequency would then be enhanced. And this is called noise enhancement. So that would be a problem doing it this way. Another aspect we need to uh, take care about is if CT, which it, which it generally is, is finite impulse response, then the DT would be an infinite impulse response filter that we would be having to design. Okay, and then this has uh, got implications in our implementation. Okay, so this is what you could do in analog. So what about instead of doing this? So instead of trying to design the D this way to invert the channel, another thing we could do is we could consider the whole input pulse shape and the channel together to be a filter, a combined filter. And then we could match, we could choose G that matches to the entire filter, not just matching to S, 
uh, but now matching to S convolved with C. And so this would give us here XT, so S convolved with C is now HT, and we could choose GT to be the matched filter to this, so H of minus T. This is what we could choose. We could choose GT to be the match filter that matches to the combination of the pulse shape and the channel. Okay, so this is an option that we could do with for matching to the channel. So I'm going to just write here matching uh, to the channel, to, to, to signal and channel, signal and channel. Okay, so that's something that we could do. Okay, now if we did that, then we would have our receiver here and we can see XT and with this XK here, we're taking a sample. We can now write a received digital signal that is in terms of these components here. And then I'm gonna look back to this to point a few things out. So now our digital received signal, we can write that now, equals, uh, because you're sampling at K times capital T, so it's gonna equal, you can write down this equation, it equals the II, so this is the information at the input, this is the data sequence coming in. So it's that data sequence times the X out of here, the digital X that is relevant at that sampling time, okay? And it's a summation of all of these. This is the output of a filter. And there's more information on, on this uh, steps from here to here in the channel, but uh, I think that you can uh, see if it's a finite impulse response, then you're gonna be getting a finite number of the components filtered through the channel coming out at time k. So let's, let's look at that in a bit more detail. So at yk, you're going to have in this summation here, let's say for, we'll pick out the one term from this summation, which is i equals k. So if we do that, little i equals k. Then we're going to have capital IK, which is the data that was sent at time k, is received at time k, and that's what we'd be interested in. But that's going to be multiplied by x of k minus k, which is x0. So that's the central component of x, x0, times that data. And that would be, uh, if that was the only component in the summation, then you would not have any intersymbol interference and you would have achieved your equalization. But in fact, there's going to, if, if x does not equal zero for the other values of k, uh, the other values of i, uh, then you're going to have other components of the data, which are multiplying by those x's, contributing to the measurement that you make at time k. And this is called intersymbol interference. So there's, again, a video on the channel on intersymbol interference for more details. Um, here's the x here. We know what it is. We can calculate it here from these analog filters. So it's possible to write down the equation for x in terms of these analog filters. I'm just not going to do that detail here, but you can see the relationship from the analog filters to the digital representation when you take digital measurements. The, the, other th the final thing here to be pointing out, though, is um, this new K here, this is the component of the noise that has come through that filter. And this noise, it, while the noise here is white uh, Gaussian noise, so it's IID noise with a flat spectrum, uh, once it comes through this filter, uh, it's not going to be white noise anymore. So it's not independent anymore. And that causes problems for the digital detection when the noise is correlated from one time slot to the next. Uh, and that, that's, that's pretty clear because this filter here, if we're choosing it to be H, if the channel is smoothing out the signal across time, and that's what the problem is that we're trying to equalize because it's not just a delta function anymore, it's a filter which is smoothing our signal. Uh, because it's smoothing the signal, it's spreading it out in time, it means the data is going to be all starting to inter uh, be appearing at subsequent time slots and interfering with previous data, that's what we end up getting with intersymbol interference. Because of that, this filter here is spreading out because it's a function of HT, which contains CT, and therefore the noise is being spread out. And that's where we're getting the correlation in the noise. So this correlation depends on X, because you can see here X is H convolved with H star, uh, and that's what's happening for the overall signal. But the correlation in the noise is in the terms of the formula for correlation, it's noise at one time times noise at another time. So then you're going to be getting H star times H star. And so you can see X involves H with H and the correlation also does, I won't write out all the formulas, but I think you can see that the correlate, hopefully you can see that the correlation is going to depend 
um, depends on x. So this depends on x. And so one thing that you can do then is what's called a noise whitening filter. I won't go into all the details, but just some intuition. Uh, we can take the Z transform because now we're in the digital domain. So we're going to be trying to fix this up in the digital domain. We've got to try and fix up this correlation. And you can do it by uh, taking the Z transform. Uh, it, because X has this property of this symmetry, uh, it turns out that um, because you chose uh, G to be this way, so it's matched to the whole uh, component here, that it gives you an overall symmetry in X, which means that the Z transform of X uh, equals actually the convolution of the Z transform of, of X with Z to the minus one. And because of this symmetry, uh, again, I won't give all the details or it's hard to probably see the intuition on this, but it turns out you can do a decomposition uh, into this form here. Um, and with this, comp this decomposition here, uh, you can then take this component of the X, which is, don't forget, it's the overall effect of all of the channel now. Uh, you can take this component, this, this decomposition, and if you take this filter here uh, and put an inverse of that filter in your digital domain, so now this is a digital filter, which has a transfer function of one on F uh, to Z to the minus one, if you use that, transformation there in a digital filter, then the output is going to have white noise, it turns out. I haven't given all the details of that, but this is what's called a noise whitening filter. This is a noise whitening filter. I think hopefully you can see that there's correlation in here and you can understand there's going to be correlation because white noise has gone through that filter, so it won't be white anymore. But because of the particular uh, properties of the way you chose this filter, you can then add a digital filter which decorrelates the noise. And it takes you then for an overall equation of this where, where the FZ here uh, is the inverse Z transform. Uh, inverse Z transform uh, gives you these values of F here. Okay, and now you have the classic digital communications uh, representation, baseband representation, where the receive signal is has, has got intersymbol interference components because the channel smoothed it out from that time slot. So when n equals zero, you've got ik. So yk has a component of ik, but it also has a component of ik minus one, ik minus two, ik minus three, the data that has come before, which has been smoothed out through this channel and is now corrupting the measurements that you're making. And that, re that results in you needing to do digital equalization. And this noise here, because you did the noise whitening, this is now IID uh, Gaussian noise. So uh, this is the relationship between the analog filters and the digital equalization, uh, and it relies also on this noise whitening filter. We're going to have videos on the channel on more on how to do the equalization uh, coming up. Um, but if this video has given you more insight uh, into the relationships here and you found it useful, give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the web link uh, in the information below for a full categorized list of all the videos on the channel.